Let's get to work, Moose. You gonna help push? You're not a very good pusher. Once again, it's a few days later. Well, I know I said I was giving up on this thing, and I kind of have, but uh, I, uh, one of my buddies over at Tri5 Mob hooked me up with a uh, Facebook group for these this Phytech EFI, some sort of group over there. So I posted the uh, issues I was having with not starting and what I've tried to do to solve it, and some guys have tried to help me out. Uh, one of the th suggestions I had was to try a separate battery because the voltage drop on the computer is so low so even with the separate battery hooked up to both the red and the white wires the dashboard inside the car when I crank even though this battery is what everything is hooked up to this will stay at like 12.7 or whatever it is and the dashboard will go all the way down to like 4 and jump around and turn off um, so you know, a lot of people thought it was like a starter draw or something like that, and, and maybe it still could be, but I'm hooked up to a completely separate battery, so it, it doesn't seem right to me. So my latest suggestion is, apparently there's a, inside the ECU, which is right here, I guess on the front of the throttle body, inside there, there's a ground wire that has a little screw that, you know, mounts the ground to the throttle body somehow or something. And apparently, uh, that has been coming loose on some of these or there's a suggestion that that's something that has happened before so I guess uh, I am going to try to take this thing off of here and Supposedly, I think I just got to take these four little cover bolts off and See if I can find a uh, ground screw in there. That's hopefully loose It seems possible to me just the way it's acting. It's always been uh, You know start not start. It's just been kind of random and weird. So if there is a loose ground in there that was you know making contact not making contact so anyways I'm hopeful but uh, we'll see what happens I thought I was gonna have to take the throttle body off to do this but uh, I'm gonna try to just take these four cover bolts off and see if that's gonna get me access to what I need I'm not sure I watched one video of a guy replacing the ECU and uh, he didn't show or say anything about a little ground wire in here that I could find as I was kind of skipping through it anyway, so we'll see what happens here. All right, I got these four little bolts off. Uh, these little guys, one, two, three, four. And pull this off for the first time and see what kind of disaster I'm gonna cause with this. Hopefully it's easy to get all back in here. And I don't have to do a bunch of other stuff to get to the thing they were talking about. Definitely some wire action in there. Yep. Maybe I'm going to have to pull it off. Something's kind of hanging up on me there. Let's see if I can see what they were talking about. Alright, I'm guessing... That right there, where my finger's kind of pointing, must be the ground screw. And it seems like it's tight. If I can get this out any further without... There's wires in here that are all attached to stuff, so I think, you know, you gotta get shit apart. I don't think I'm quite gonna be able to get to it. Need some sort of order Allen wrench that can get in there. But, oh, well, I just barely, so I just barely touched that in it to see if it was uh, connected and uh, the connector broke. So the bolt is tight, but there's no way I pushed that hard enough to break that. So maybe it was already broken right there, let's hope, and just barely hanging on. So now I gotta try to find a way to, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to get that off there and replace that end and hope that was our problem. All right, let's see if we can uh, get this end replaced on here.
All right, so I replaced that ground, put a new end on it, got that good and tight. I hooked the red wire back up to the original battery, how it's supposed to be. And uh, I think we're ready to see if this is gonna work or not. Well, I was super hopeful, but the dashboard is still doing the same thing. The voltage is fluctuating all over the place. I was hoping that was because that ground was loose in there. But, strike out again. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Montana Garage. I got an empty spot here in the shop. Uh, let's fill it up with 57 Chevy and see if we can make it start. Kind of welcoming myself back here to the Montana garage too. I spent the last four days, uh, three of which uh, sitting in a car driving from here to New York City. Yep, New York City, if you can believe that or not. Uh, drove clear out there, 33 plus hours, 2200 plus miles uh, to drop my daughter off at college. Uh, she has a car out there and I didn't want her to drive out there by herself. So drove out there with her, dropped her off, got her moved into her room, and then I hopped on a big old bird and uh, flew back home last night so it was kind of a whirlwind four days it was kind of cool though it sounds like it would be terrible right sitting in the car for three long days and then uh, you know the next day spending like eight hours in an airplane or with layovers and all that stuff but it was actually pretty pretty fun glad I got to do it spend some time with my daughter see some of the country and uh, yeah I'll probably do it again next year I did it last year too anyways now that I'm back here at the Montana garage uh, I think I said in the last video that uh, the next video would be getting back to work on the 55 Chevy. Uh, no, I haven't done that. Uh, I also said I might work on the 57 Chevy. No, didn't do that either. Uh, I did add a sticker to the back of it though. What do you guys think? Big Block Kings. Uh, Big Block Kings over there on Instagram. They got a lot of cool stuff on their uh, site. He's got a really cool uh, 55 Chevy gasser. You should go check him out on Instagram. And uh, yeah. Like it, share it, all that stuff. He's pretty, pretty cool sight. Anyways, we are back to trying to figure out why this 57 Chevy is not starting. I finally had time to get a hold of technical service there at Phytech and uh, tell them some of the symptoms the car was having, some of the things I was trying to do to, to uh, fix it or make it start. And initially the guy was pretty helpful. You know, he spent a lot of time uh, having me look at the settings on the dashboard and he adjusted it or had me adjust a few things and like update, reset some things. And I think even like update some software kind of like, I don't know if it did or not. I wasn't really connected to anything, but we refreshed it or I don't know, computer stuff. Um, once we did all that, we did the old cranky, 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 and it was still no starting, no starting, no starting, no fire. And at that point, the guy asked me what kind of ignition system I had in the car. And I said, well, you know, I got the basic old standard stock point system from 1903, you know, whatever, not 1903, but old standard points. And he said, no, that's no go, not gonna work. And I said, well, it, it did work. I was running, the car was running, I was driving it. It's been constantly giving headaches, but it worked. I, you know, it ran. And uh, he said, no, it won't work with points. Again, I said, well, it did work. So why did it quit working? He said, well, until you change the points, I can't diagnose it any further. The points caused he said something like too much, you know, interference or uh, he figured that's probably the reason for my voltage drop. Didn't really know, but he just said until I switch the points and get some electronic ignition in there, they can't help me any further. That's right, Moose. We got to get rid of the points. You think that's a good idea? Should we get rid of the points? Is that the point to get rid of the points? I will agree that getting rid of the points or upgrading to an electronic ignition is probably, you know, the way to go, a really smart move. Uh, you know, I've said it before, I'm trying to kind of keep this low budget. I just want to be able to drive this car, uh, make some small improvements along the way. But first, I'm just trying to get to where I can drive it. And I didn't want to spend a bunch of money. Um, everybody suggests I switch to HEI. And I probably said this one in the other videos. There's just, there's no room. The way the engine's mounted, the firewall or the distributor cap is like right on the firewall. And we all know that the HEI cap is significantly larger. Um, I'm kind of cheap, so I didn't want to pony up for an MSD 
distributor in a box and all that stuff, or even like a Mallory Unilite, I've ran one of those before. That's, what, that's what's on the 57 actually. Um, but those are all, they all cost money, you know? Uh, everything costs money, so I, I know that's part of having hot rods, but trying to keep the cost down a little bit. So I went with, I was gonna show you what I went with, but Moose is right in the way. Moose, what kind of ignition did we go with? We went with the uh, Igniter 2 conversion kit. So we can use the same distributor and then uh, you just get rid of the points and put this little little red guy in there and it's magic or something. And uh, yeah, somehow that uh, replaces the points. Uh, Pertronics Igniter 2 and then it has to run a certain ohm of a coil. So I got a flamethrower 2 coil from the same outfit. I've done a little research on the old interwebs and uh, seems like it's supposed to work. People are happy with it. Uh, it was fairly inexpensive, you know, as far as trying to keep the cost down. And it looks pretty easy to uh, do too. So all you gotta do is basically pull your points out, put that in there, add a couple wire, you know, get, I think I gotta get rid of the resistor block, you know, repair some wires, add some wire ends, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna see if I can get that done tonight. Uh, so I gotta get some of that stuff out of the way so I can push the 57 in here and get to work. Let's get to work, Moose. You gonna help push? You're not a very good pusher. It is wet and rainy and slippery out there, so I lost traction on the grass trying to push the car in, so I had to get some backup, but here we go. DD speed shop. I know a lot of you guys don't like me calling it that. That's just what I call it. I mean, that's what I called it when I got it. It's like changing your kid's name. We might change it eventually, but you'll just have to deal with it till then. Anyways, back in the Montana garage. Looks kind of shiny when it's wet. Uh, it never rained. Well, I said earlier it never rains in July in another video. It never really never rains in August, but it's been raining a lot today. So that's good. We need it. It's been hot and dry like everywhere else, I'm sure. All right, so uh, the rest of this video is mostly gonna be about trying to figure out how to install this uh, Pertronics ignition. Uh, instructions seem fairly simple. Basically, we're gonna take the distributor cap off, pull the points out, put this little module in there where the points used to be, add some wire ends, hook that bad boy up to the coil, add a different coil, get rid of the resistor block. So that's the uh, short version. So let's uh, make it happen. You what are you inspecting today, Moose? It's gonna be a little slippery, be careful. Better keep the camera on in case we have some. Maybe it'll be a catastrophe. What do you think? I don't know what you're doing. Oh, you gonna jump? Going for the jump? Thinking about it. The suspense is killing me. How you folks doing? Bored yet? If he's not going for the jump. Engine inspection. What are you pointing at this time? People are saying that what you point at uh, is what I have to work on next. Yeah, pointing at the fight deck. That's what we're working on. Alright, well, I guess if you're not going to do anything exciting, we got stuff we got to get done. People are getting tired of watching you walk around in the car. Windows aren't open. All right, back to work. Or, let's start work at least, maybe. How's that? Dang it, I got tired of waiting. He did the jump right after I turned the camera off. Just doesn't like, doesn't like to show off in front of you folks, I guess. Anyways, maybe we'll catch him next time. Uh, for those of you wondering, if you didn't watch the last video, I have a alternate or second battery uh, sitting here because 
In the troubleshooting of the Phytech, I tried to hook the Phytech up to a different 12 volt source so I knew the starter wasn't draining and causing my voltage draw. It didn't work, but uh, I still have it there. Um, I'll leave it until I get done, until I get this thing working right, because I might have to try that again if it uh, still is acting up after this. Maybe we'll try, you know, hooking up the other battery again or starting it on fire. I don't know, we'll try some stuff. I guess we're ready to put the igniter plate in and it says uh, that it does not seat in the same location as the points approximately seats 180 degrees from the points location so there's you use one of the point holes and then these points had a condenser right on them uh, but most of you guys know you could have a separate condenser so there's a hole where the condenser would mount um, So that's the points and that's the points. It's been a while since I've done one of those. What's it look like on this guy with the condenser? I don't know if this one's got this separate condenser or not. Yeah, so yeah, that's that hole in the back. So this igniter plate is gonna go from one from this hole to this hole, I assume. Whereas kind of upside down here, but you can see the points were kind of at the front of the distributor. This is the igniter plate. Uh, somehow this little magic red box replaces your points. Uh, if you look from this side, yeah, a bunch of stuff in my way. Kind of see. Get that hole there and that hole in the back. I don't know if you see that on there or not, but that's where this is going to go. And it says there are some dimples. Uh, you can kind of feel a little dimple right there. Right there, where the condenser sat. Somehow this, maybe those holes, go over those dimples. Anyways, let's put it in here and see if we can figure it out. So there's that hole. Hope it's not fragile. Probably is. So yeah, there's two holes. See, there's three holes in this guy. Where am I at? Why can't I see nothing? Three holes in that guy right there. The center hole is going to be your screw hole. The other two holes fit over a couple little uh, dimples. They called them in the instructions from where the points were installed before. So I can actually feel it once you get it in the right spot. Even though I can't find it with my camera, it kind of locks in place. They give you a couple new screws, which is good because I of course dropped one of the original ones back there into the abyss of firewall transmission. I'll probably drop a couple of these too. We'll see if we can get them started without dropping them. I get older my fingers just they're they're not as dexterous or whatever I'm trying to say you old guys probably know what I'm talking about get these wires out of my way and I guess I could have took the coil out of my way because that's got to come off let me see if I can get it in here without dropping it one time and if I don't get it the first try I'll move the coil I think I can get to it I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Cause I can barely see what I'm doing. All right, I think I got her started. We're gonna need a shorty screwdriver to get in there, I believe. Let me know if any of you guys are running this Pertronic setup. Um, I've heard of them before, but I've never 
never tried one or never read much about it until I decided that maybe that's the way to go here. A couple of you guys, I think, had actually even recommended it. So hopefully it's going to... I mean, it's got to be better than points, right? And then hopefully it's going to solve our Phytech issues as well. So find out soon enough, I guess. And that's probably not going to work. All right, so those are tight. What's next? All right, so now you got to put a new rubber grommet down in there. You can see my finger. I started to see how it was going to work without filming it, and I actually got it in there without struggling too much, so I don't want to take it back out. But the struggle is going to be now i got to get these two wires, the red wire and the black wire, down through that hole. Alright, so as I suspected, the first one is pretty easy. I'm not sure, I don't know, it's quite a bit bigger hole, it seems like, than the original grommet. I'm not sure, I think I probably wanted to go on the other side of that black wire though, didn't I? Darn it. Strike one. One inside the black wire, and then down in the hole, and hope to figure out how to get it through the grommet with the red wire already in there. Maybe they both got to go together. Alright, you guys don't need to watch this struggle, plus the camera's in the way. I'll let you know if I ever get it. I couldn't get it by dumb luck, so I did the old fish wire trick. I taped, I already had the red wire through there, so I taped the black wire to the red wire, and it eventually it kind of pulled out of there, but it got her started through the hole. So I got both these wires through the hole. It just says to not leave any excess wire, make sure there's no moving parts. So this, uh, this vacuum plate moves a little bit. No, I almost think I should. Maybe I wanted to be on the other side of that wire, but. So the igniter plate is installed. Uh, got the wires going down through the little hole here. They're still not connected to anything, but it's pretty simple. Red's going to go positive of coil, black to negative, I believe. I'll double check that. Uh, but at this point, we can put the cap and rotor back on, and then we'll change the coil. Before we install the coil, I guess I need to figure out where some of these wires are going. So we're going to get rid of this resistor block. So this wire should be coming right off my ignition. So I need to go right from here. Uh, and it's going through this resistor and then it goes to the coil. We're going to get rid of this resistor. So this kind of orangish brownish wire has got to get extended and go right to the coil. Uh, this yellow wire, that's where I got the Phytech hooked up, so we'll have to do something different there. Probably just go, uh, it's kind of the same thing, I guess, as having it right to the positive of the coil. So I'll see if there's a reason to not do that, but that's probably what I'll do for now. If I still have issues, then we'll figure out some way to hook it up with the relay. But I don't know where these others, well, I just tracked one of them down. There's kind of a little, some old wiring that's pulling apart here. So we got... This little green wire, I'm not sure where that goes. Then we got, so this other green wire right here, it comes over. I was always wondering why there were so many wires to the positive of the coil on this thing. This goes to the positive of the coil. There was one other wire on there before that went to the, or those, that's the negative. It goes to the negative of the coil, and it just went over here and stopped. Well, this green one goes into the firewall right here. I just went in and tracked it down. It just goes in there and stops. So I can get rid of that. Uh, there's a yellow wire right here that's cut. So it's going to come out of this bundle. And then the only other one is, looks like there's this wire right here, which is maybe this green wire up here. So I'm going to have to unravel all this and see where that goes or if I need it. We can uh, get rid of a couple of those, run this right to the coil and be good. Well, we got this track down a little bit. Uh, I don't really, can't really make sense of it, but so we got this green wire that was coming off the resistor block. 
It went up here, and this was all taped in a big old bundle, and then it comes down. And it turns into this guy that was just taped off. And then we got kind of a bluish wire that was also taped off with these. And then it goes back up into this harness up here. And I'm guessing, I don't see it right here, so it probably goes under the dash. So my theory, mind you it's just a theory, is that uh, the screen wire probably was some sort of original hookup to the to the resistor. Who knows? Could have been something else. I uh, I have a bunch of restore books for a '57 Chevy that my uncle gave me, so I'll have to dig through there and see if there's a wiring diagram or find one somewhere and see. But for now, uh, near as I can tell, well, let's see. It's going to come down and go to that, and then it goes back up and goes somewhere else, doesn't it? So we got the yellow, or the green, and the blue going back into the firewall, or possibly is this the green coming back out over here? Do a little more investigating. So I found the green wire. It goes up into this harness and then comes over here and just stops. So we can get rid of all that green wire for now. Update time. Uh, I got the new coil in, put some new wire ends on, got rid of some wires that we don't need. So I got the coil. I mean, it's, uh, I need to do some changing. I made one wire a little long, you know, but for now, she's good enough to see if it's going to make noise. So I got uh, red and black coming out of the new uh, igniter plate thing going to the coil. I got, I got to look at this, but. Uh, I have the white wire from the Phytech going to the positive of the coil. That's basically what I had before because it was hooked to ignition to here and that goes to the coil. So it should be the same thing. I'll have to walk, check and see if we're holding voltage there. But for now, I think I got everything cleaned up. Uh, I haven't turned it over yet to see what's going to happen. So I guess now is as good a time as any to see if we're going to get uh, any firing or watch the dashboard here to see if we're going to get the same kind of voltage fluctuation or if we're going to make some improvements. All right, so key on. I haven't checked the battery. I don't like that it gave me that low number right then. So it gave me that 58,000 number with the points, and that's when they're like, oh, no, you can't have the points. Now we got battery voltage fluctuating. Hopefully it's just figuring out what it's doing. All right, so probably should have the battery charger on it, but let's see. Let's just watch and see what happens with the voltage as I crank. All right. So... It probably dropped a little low, but it didn't, you know, spaz out and jump all over the place. I wasn't paying attention. Let's make sure we got an RPM signal. Okay, we got RPM. Uh, we had an RPM signal. So if we don't have an RPM signal, it's not going to work either. So I don't know what's up with that. Crazy RPM signal. Let's throw the battery charger on and see if, if that makes any difference. Battery charger on boost. I just hooked it up, so I uh, probably should let it charge for a while. I just wanted to see what's going to happen just on boost charge. So, getting some kind of weird numbers there. There we go. Cranking over much faster. Still numbers. Going all over, dropping all the way. No fireage. Okay, so with this Pertronics uh, conversion kit, I didn't turn the distributor all. I didn't, you know, mess with the timing. But it says that your timing can move by about 10 degrees. 
Um, so right now we're not getting any fire at all to know anything about that, but I'm going to pull a plug and see if we have spark. All right, let's watch right there and see if we got any uh, fireworks. That's a negatory on the fireworks show, so let's uh, check our wiring diagram and see what we got screwed up. Plug. I am back out in the Montana garage fighting, literally fighting with this 57 Chevy. I cannot, for the life of me, um, I don't know, nothing seems to go right with this thing. Anyways, uh, last time I was out here, I was trying to upgrade the distributor with the Protronics ignition kit, and uh, it, it wasn't working, so. Uh, I've let it set for a couple days. I've been busy with work, but I came back out just to kind of run some tests and check some voltages again to make sure I have everything right. Uh, I did a couple, spent a little bit of time researching, you know, looking at troubleshooting and whatnot, and I'm confident that I have everything wired right. I got, you know, good grounds. I got the proper resistance. I got a, the good coil. I got, I got, uh, I got spark at the coil or coming out of the coil. Uh, but no spark at the spark plugs. I have actually had, it's weird, I've had like intermittent spark. Like if I uh, pull a park pl spark plug out and set it on the valve cover and crank the engine over for 10 seconds, it'll spark maybe one time once in a while and no times other times. Um, so that's weird. But near as I can tell, the only thing I can figure out is the Protronics unit is, is not good. So uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of them tomorrow and see if they got any advice or if maybe they can send me a replacement and see if that's going to make it better. But uh, for now, I guess I'm out here. I got to get all this stuff cleaned up because this thing's got to go bye bye again. I can't, I got to push it out. I can't, I can't drive it. I won't start. So I got to push it out of the way, uh, set it over in the corner. Maybe it'll start on fire. I don't know. Uh, I'm just, I'm sick of it. Uh, in the meantime, also while I'm out here, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I don't know if I'm supposed to show stuff like this, but. We got a little Tri-5 mob, it's called Live in the Mob. We got a couple of the Tri-5 mob guys. And then tonight's guest is Alex Taylor, so I'm listening to that. Uh, so you should go to YouTube and check that out if you want to hear. It's usually uh, Tri-5 related, obviously, um, but cool stuff there. So check that out, and I'm going to get this crap out of the way and work on that crap later.